Um, Prabhupada, first of all, told us to preach according to our realizations. If you are simply repeating Prabhupada like some kind of parrot, um, then, uh, and not the shuka parrot, that we, <laughs> we shuka sweetens the teachings, uh, but in the mindlessness of a parrot that can imitate extremely well, um, we're not necessarily preaching according to our realization. Sometimes to repeat what Prabhupada says, of course, is part of our realization. To, our realization is to repeat what the spiritual master has said. But the idea is to repeat not in an imitative way, but in a following way. Not anukara, but anusara. To absorb the ideas of what Prabhupada is saying and then to put them in your own language. That is more powerful. Um, if we speak simply by imitating Prabhupada and simply by quoting Prabhupada, that's not bad, but that's Kanishta. When we have absorbed the teachings through experience and through repeated practice and reading, and we're able to put it in our own language in a way that powerfully can uh, be received by others, then that is Madhyama type of preaching. And Uttama can truly absorb what that person needs to hear, can be totally tuned in and sensitive to the thoughts and feelings of another person and administer something from the whole of Krishna Bhakti teachings. And customized just for them. I would say that's Uttama, Uttama preaching. That's beautiful. So Uttama is not just attuned to Krishna and completely transcendental in that sense. Uttama is also attuned to that particular soul and what they need to move closer to Krishna. Yeah. You see, Chaitanya Charanji, as long as I'm suffering from a hunkar, hmm. self-centeredness, centered on myself, then I'm going to be overly concerned about being, you know, in my, according to my mind's understanding, loyal to Prabhupada. Because that, so this, forget about the other person to whom I'm speaking. First and foremost is my need to be loyal to Prabhupada. Well, that's self-centered, isn't it? Really? How is? Whereas the counter action of ahankara, and this is my neologism, okay, is anyakara, okay. being centered upon another. To actually be full and, and complete enough in yourself to where you can leave yourself and focus on another to find out what is their need, what are their thoughts, what is in their hearts, then to administer, taking from the whole palette of Krishna Bhakti and giving them exactly what they need. That's Uttama. Beautiful. So It's selfless. It's selfless. My God, you are really uh, radically alt uh, altering conventional conceptions here. So uh, conventional ones, but but not Prabhupada's. Not Prabhupada's. I agree. I'm just putting no, it. That it's there. It's there in Prabhupada's teachings. But unfortunately, yeah, it's a bit subtle. Yes, definitely. The point I was saying is the need to be loyal to Prabhupada that could also arise from ahankar. That might yes. possibly arise from bhakti. Yes. So, in one sense, I I will repeat what Prabhupada said, and nobody can find fault in my repetition of Prabhupada's words. So right. in one sense, I want to be patted on the back for how faithful I am to Srila Prabhupada. Yeah, I call that Kanishta clinging. Kanishta clinging, okay. Kanishta clinging. The Kanishta clinging to Prabhupada's literal words or clinging to what? Yeah, to, to, to Prabhupada's words, that's right. It's, it's it, the clinging to Prabhupada's words because that feels safe. And I'm concerned about myself here. You see, I want to make sure. And, and you know what? 
at a certain level, that's okay. A beginner naturally is that way, just like a child clings to his parents' you know, jacket. They hold on to the, you know, they're little. They hold on, they're clinging. But if I'm still clinging to my parents when I'm a full-grown adult, you might say to me, uh, Garuda, why are you, uh, you know, still the mama's boy, you know? <laughs> that, that kind of thing, right? We have, we, there has to be growth in Krishna Bhakti. When there's not growth, then there's a stunting of, of, of development. There's a retardation of development. And if we're not developing, we're staying at one place and we've been just stunted. We've not grown. Hmm. You know, I was just thinking of what you said, what that person needs. And one example of Prabhupada came to my mind. It's humorous, but it I never thought of it in this context. Prabhupada was once asked by a hippie that, uh, that you know, Swami, what is the spiritual world like? What is the bliss of the spiritual world like? Yeah. And Prabhupada said, it's like an ocean of LSD. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> where in scripture will you find that somebody might consider it offensive? How dare it's you right, consider it transcendent? Right, right, right. See, see, see that you see, then 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 someone will take that from the outside saying Prabhupada is promoting the use of hallucinogenic drugs. Oh God, okay. <laughs> you see, see, there we go again. You see. Hmm. Prabhupada will use the shock treatment, right? A little shock treatment there. Um, Prabhupada, and yet within the shock treatment, there's a lesson, you know, hmm. there's something to be learned. But if you take that statement in its literal fashion, the devotees of the Hare Krishna movement are seeking an ocean of hallucinogenic bliss. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so, this is a good example of what you said earlier, Prabhupada's uh, Zen master, like shock teaching. That's it, right. It did serve the message for that person. Oh, oh, somebody who is attracted to LSD, or oh, I can get so much LSD, I'll go there. That's right. So, in one sense, if you want, if you want to be loyal to Prabhupada and faithful to Prabhupada, we can also be faithful to this aspect of Prabhupada, where right. he, where he is being very creative. Yes. In, uh, in what you said about you know drawing from the vast uh, vast uh, palette of scriptural teachings, yes. and he's not even exactly drawing them there, there. He's actually taking the principle from there and drawing from the experience of his audience. That's right. Between the two. That's right. So, so this earlier you said about this uh, Sorry, what is it? That in the rigid categories and flexible. So sometimes uh, we think of faithfulness to Prabhupada as almost like one doing one functioning in one way only as being faithful to Prabhupada. But Prabhupada yes. himself had many different aspects. Yes. And faithfulness to Prabhupada will also include faithfulness to Prabhupada's flexibility, Prabhupada's resourcefulness, Prabhupada's creativity. Then if we are not, we are neglecting that aspect, then are we really being holistically faithful to Prabhupada? We can be faithful but we won't be holistically faithful. Yes, exactly. Why, you know, why don't we seek to make Prabhupada proud? In other words, uh, when the child imitates the parent, the parent can be, you know, proud and, and it be humored. Oh, look, look how nice they're imitating, you know, okay. Um, but when the child has grown and matured into a strong adult, that's even more pleasing to the parent. Look, I've been successful, right? And so, um, uh, you know, um, Prabhupada is like a father in the sense that he wants to see his disciples evolve and grow and think of ingenious ways to present Krishna Bhakti. Not that he established the be all and end all of all presentations. Sometimes devotees will say to me something similar that you are challenged by with those provocative words. So you translated uh, your own Bhagavad Gita with the world famous publisher, uh, Garuda. So what, why did you do that? You can do better than Prabhupada, you see? Hmm. 
Look, my 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 father um, went to Duke University, which is considered one of the best universities in the country. But I went to Harvard. He was proud. He didn't say, um, Graham, I went to Duke. You have no right to go to Harvard. He didn't do that. Any, any guru wants to see his or her disciples blossom in ways that he or she could not or did not. Um, an example of this clearly is when, when Prabhupada created the Bhaktivedanta Institute. Srubdhamadar, you know, was, I think, a chemist, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Theoretical chemist, yeah. Yeah, chemist. And then, and then um, uh, I think uh, Madhava was a, uh, maybe he was a chemist also. Sadaputta was a mathematician. So is it, was it bad that Sadaputta knew more mathematics than Prabhupada? I mean, was that a bad thing? I mean, you know, no, he engaged these forms of expertise and said, now you take this. Life comes from life. Now you take your disciplines and show this. Mm-hmm. Take levels of expertise. Look, uh, Prabhupada says on page 268 of the first canto of the Bhagavatam, I even remember the page number. Now, how often do I remember the page number for anything? I don't even remember my birthday. And that's numeric also. On page 268, Prabhupada repeats no fewer than three times. Whatever the discipline, archaeology, psychology, uh, 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 you know, English literature, history, whatever the discipline, it is Hari Kirtan when it is offered to Krishna. When something in your discipline reveals the nature of divinity, this is Hari Kirtan. Did Prabhupada ever say, don't ever become an expert more than I am? No, we all develop different expertises. There's nothing wrong in that. Make Prabhupada proud. 